Welcome back engineers and friends, my name is Mike, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to mic up a drum set in your home. This is actually my garage. So a few months back, we went up to the Deep End Recording Studio and watched a professional in a studio environment mic up a drum set. Here is gonna be how you can do it in your own home. The track that we're gonna be working with is a big band feel, it's something we're writing for the holidays. So let's dive in, talk about the mics and how they're placed, talk about the space, and let's get the tracking. So the kit that we're going to be using today is a 2004 Mapex Pro-M. It's no longer made, but I really, really love the kit. The heads that we have are Evans EC2S. They are a clear two-ply batter head, nothing crazy. If you're ever in the market for a used drum set and you come across one of these, it's totally worth the money. The cymbals that we're going to be using today are a mix of Zildjian and Sabian. I've got a 21-inch Sabian AAX stage ride here, a pair of 14-inch AAX um, Sabian hi-hats, and a 17 inch Zildjian A Custom Crash. The snare that we're working with is gonna be a pork pie 14 inch big black with just a two ply Evans coated batter head. Okay, so as you can see, we are on set in a garage and I'm zoomed out so that you can actually see the overheads. These overheads are the Neumann KM184s. I love these to death, done a number of videos on them. Um, check out the ones about acoustic guitars, drum overheads, I think I did a couple violin videos using these. These KM184s are the most universal microphone you can find to record drum overheads. The sounds are very true. There's not too much bottom end. They're not too punchy. They're not too processed. I'll post a link in the description of a drum overhead shootout that these participated in so you can check them out for yourselves. Let's talk about placement. I like to place the hi-hat side overhead pointing straight down between the hi-hat and the left crash cymbal. A lot of people will say point it at the snare. I just point it straight down. It's whatever works for you. That's what works for me. The mic on the ride cymbal side is actually pointed just over top of the ride cymbal, straight down at the floor between the floor tom and the bass drum. The microphones are measured to be equidistant in height from the center of the snare. This is extremely important because if sound takes longer to reach one of the microphones than the other, you're gonna have some phase issues. All right, let me get out of the way so you can see the Tom mics that I just put up. These are the Sennheiser MD421 Series 2. They're a dynamic mic unlike the condenser that the Neumann KM184s are. The reason why I like to use condensers uh, for overheads is they capture a lot of sounds. The reason why I use dynamic mics on floor toms is they're really good at rejecting sound. I started using my current room mics, the Audio-Technica 4040 on my toms, and yes, they sounded huge, and when a tom is by themself, by itself, it's really great. So if you're just putting some toms into a rock track without any other things going on, a condenser mic would probably be a good choice. However, when a whole drum set is being played, a dynamic mic is much better because it's gonna reject all the cymbal sounds, the bass drum sound, the bass drum pedal sound, and all that kind of stuff. I've used SM57s and the Sennheiser E602 dynamic mics, and they just don't compare to these MD421s. They sound punchier, they sound more dynamic, they just sound incredible. Let's talk about placement. So you'll notice that the MD421 is not directly over the tom itself, it's more over that outer third edge of the tom. I feel that this location not only picks up great tom depth, but also keeps a great tone without getting in the drummer's way. So everybody's favorite, the kick drum. The most important thing to me about a kick drum is the outer head that we have to work with. You'll notice that the Aquarian head I'm using has a giant hole right in the center. This gives me really easy access to mic the drum and make adjustments when I need to. I highly recommend that you get a short mic stand on Amazon. They're really cheap. It's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache. This is the Samson MB1. I'll put a link in the description. It's connected to a Sennheiser E604 bass drum mic, and this mic sounds really, really good on the bass drum. A lot of people talk about Audix. Uh, a lot of people talk about Shure. I really like the Sennheiser E604. It's not too clicky, it's not too processed, it's not too boomy, it's just right for any genre. Now I'm gonna place this mic halfway into the bass drum and it's gonna be facing directly at where the beater connects the head. This is gonna give me enough punch and maintain enough tone to do what I needed to do. Okay, so now that we've taken care of the overheads, the toms, and the bass drum, let's hit that snare. Nothing crazy on the snare, we're just gonna be going with SM57 top and bottom. I am going to invert the phase on the bottom snare drum on my ISA 110 preamps on the way in. The reason you have to worry about phase is when you have two microphones facing one another, 
they're going to cancel each other's sound waves out the way they record and you're not going to get any body to the instrument or source you're recording. Therefore you have to flip the phase and get those sound waves back aligned and therefore you can actually hear what you're recording. I'll post a link in the description for more about phase. I like to place these mics in line with the actual snares on the bottom of the snare head. If these are the snares on the bottom of the head, I place one mic right over top and one mic right underneath. If you do not have enough mics or enough inputs to mic both the top and bottom, this is extremely important. You're going to get a lot of the snap when that mic is in line with the snares on the bottom of the drum. Okay, so we've taken care of the overheads, the toms, the bass drum, the snare. Just a few more mics to place and we're ready to go. The hi-hat's up next. I like to use a ribbon mic on that, the Royer R10. It's half the price of the Royer R121 and has the same capsule. Sounds great on electric guitar and the hi-hat. I've experimented with condensers and dynamics over the years. They just sound too harsh to my ears. The ribbon is just right. I like to place it on the outermost portion of the hi-hat away from the drum set so it doesn't pick up quite as much of the rest of the set. And since it's a ribbon and darker in nature, I like to face it right at the hi-hat. Check out my drum editing video if you like to see how I process the hi-hat into the rest of the kit. If you couldn't tell that we were in a garage before, welcome to my mess of a garage where we do all of our video work and a lot of our recording work. The reason why I'm showing you this mess is because right above my head is the Audio-Technica 4040s. They are on a stereo bar and these are my room mics. They're a good six feet, seven feet off of the drum set, and they're on a stereo bar to help with their spacing. These mics coupled with the overheads are some of the most important mics that we have on this drum set. When you're recording in the genre that we're gonna be recording in, not a lot of processing is gonna be happening, just some slight EQ. So it's really important to capture the kit in the space that it's in and do it correctly. If you do not have a large space inside your house, I highly recommend using your garage if you have one because drums as instruments really require big space. You'll hear a lot of different placement tips from a lot of different folks. I like to place my room mics at about cymbal height, facing the kit. For this particular genre that we're gonna be working with today, these room mics are gonna allow me to take full advantage of the space that we're in. And since jazz, big band styled music doesn't require a lot of processing, we're gonna to have to lean on these microphones. We'll hope some of this helps you out in your endeavors to record at home. We all don't have access to record at a professional recording studio all day every day. So we have to make do with what we got. And quite often if you have decent gear, you can get great sounds out of the comfort of your own home. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. What's your setup like? I would love to hear what you're running to record drums in your own home. How many mics do you use? What kind of interface? Do you have any experience with the microphones that we talked about today? The point of this channel is to start conversations about recording in the home and how we do it without truckloads of gear and gobs of money being spent. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. We're also on Instagram now at Engineers and Friends. Hope you're staying safe out there, and we'll see you again real soon.